this video primarily shares some experience about wax materials and analysis for handmade candles, so I won't reiterate them before each video and will instead focus on demonstrating new crafting techniques. Understanding the characteristics of wax materials and additives enables us to flexibly create and design candles in our own unique styles. The following five types of wax are widely used in candle making. The first one is soil wax, which is divided into container soil wax and pillar soil wax. As the name implies, it's a natural wax extracted from soybeans. The melting point of container soil wax generally ranges between 48 degrees Celsius and 52 degrees Celsius. Many brands of soil wax, such as Golden Wax Forces Floor, are easily available. It can carry 10% of free oil and has a strong adhesion ability to container walls. Natural wax C3 soil wax are known for its high purity and excellent scent diffusion. There are also many soil wax brands you can choose according to your needs. Pure soil wax has a melting point, typically between 54 degrees Celsius and 58 degrees Celsius. Its shrinkage feature helps us easily demold a candle. As the name implies, it can be used alone to make pillar and geometric candle. If you've watched my pure candle tutorial, you know that pure candle can be made using pure soil wax alone or in a blend with container soil wax and white beeswax. The video link has put in the description bar for reference. Therefore, there are two types of soil wax. Please avoid confusion when purchasing by noting their different melting points. The second type of wax is beeswax, categorized into refined white beeswax and raw yellow beeswax. White beeswax exhibits a light yellow color and is harder and smoother in texture compared to soil wax. It can be used alone to make pure candles or combined with soil wax as a formula wax. Beyond enhancing the candle's hardness, it also boosts resilience and flexibility. For instance, in a slender taper candle, a typical ratio is 1 to 1 of white beeswax to container soil wax. However, in most with intricate details, it becomes necessary to increase the proportion of white beeswax such as 7 to 3 or 8 to 2. Occasionally, 100% white beeswax is used for very complex modes, similar to a wax decoration applied to the pure candles in my previous video. Please note that the pouring temperature should be above 90 degrees Celsius for 100% white beeswax candles. Additionally, please heat the molds with a heat gun before pouring the wax. If you prefer to skip the heating process, the pouring temperature should be above 100 degrees Celsius. Yellow beeswax is softer and much resilient than white beeswax. Since it's naturally yellow, white pigment is required to color the wax so that we can adjust the color based on this yellowish white. The third type is paraffin wax. In handmade candles, go for handcrafting and fully refined paraffin wax. Paraffin wax semi-transparency, stain ability, and tough resilience make it highly versatile for creating various styles in candle designs. The higher the melting point of paraffin wax, the higher the hardness, and vice versa. The commonly used melting points are 48 degrees Celsius and 58 degrees Celsius. 48 degrees Celsius can be used to make real handshake candles, while 58 degrees Celsius can be used to make translucent pillar candles. For making flawless pillar with paraffin wax, pour the wax at a temperature above 100 degrees Celsius and add paraffin additives AC6 or VEBA 103 to eliminate air bubbles and white spots. Due to the strong coloring nature of paraffin wax, use transparent candle flame oil to prevent a candle from staining light yellow. Some candle flame oil may react with the paraffin wax, causing defects on the finished candle. I recommend adding in dosage of 5%, 8% or even higher if you want, for testing the flame oil to see if it can be blended well with the paraffin wax. Paraffin wax has a good scent diffusion ability, choose high quality, concentrated, Candle specific flame oil, even a small amount can achieve the desired scent diffusion effect. The fourth type is gel wax, also known as jelly wax, categorized into high, medium, and low density gel wax. The higher the density, the higher the melting point and hardness, and vice versa. Low and high density gel wax are commonly used for making container candles and pillar candles. Gel wax is temperature sensitive. Sudden temperature changes caused by the contact with a container or mold can lead to poor fluidity and the appearance of air bubbles. Therefore, use a heat gun to warm the molds or cup before pouring the wax. Demolding gel wax from acrylic molds is hard even if you use candle mold release spray, so I recommend using silicone molds for gel wax candles. 
The pouring temperature for Zhao Wes is relatively high, ranging between 100 degrees Celsius and 130 degrees Celsius. Frail oil evaporates significantly at this temperature, affecting the sandal. You may also make unscented Zhao candles and later drop frail oil in the West pool. The fifth type is palm wax, a natural wax extracted from palm trees. Palm wax is categorized into crystalline and non-crystalline types. In handmade candles, Feathering palm wax and crystalline palm wax are commonly used. As the name suggests, these wesses produce feather and small crystalline effects. To maximize texture display, ensure the pouring temperature is about 90 degrees Celsius and heat the mold with a heat gun before making. If the pouring temperature is below 65 degrees Celsius, there will be no crystalline nature, resulting in a frosty matte texture similar to non-crystalline palm wax. Palm wax has a brittle texture and is not recommended for making detailed and delicate molds, as they may break easily during demolding. These are wesses commonly used in making handmade candles and are easily available in the market. In candle making, even with the right formula and correct operation, some undesirable flaws may still occur due to the nature of the wax or unexpected feathers. In such cases, additives are used to change or correct the nature of the wax. The first commonly used candle additive is AC6, which belongs to a polyethylene wax. Its primary function is to increase the hardness of paraffin wax, enhance its luster, and eliminate air bubbles and white spots. This is the most commonly used additive in the production of paraffin wax candles. Without it, the surface of paraffin pillars will have more natural flaws. However, it's important to know that adding too much AC6 will reduce the transparency of the paraffin candle. To produce a flawless paraffin wax pillar while maintaining the mass transparency of the wax itself, add within the range of 0.1% to 0.5% AC6. Adding up to 1% will make the paraffin pillar texture smoother and harder, but it will become more opaque. Avoid adding more than 3% as it can be lead to flame retardancy. Also, you might smell the alti while the candle is burning. Please know that we are referring to AC6, not AC6A. Please ensure you use the correct one. Another type of wax additive is Vapor series, with Vapor 103 commonly used in handmade candles. In terms of improving luster and removing air bubbles, Vapor 103 surpasses AC6, but is inferior in maintaining the transparency of the paraffin wax. If the goal is merely enhance the hardness and luster of paraffin candle, the transparency is not a consideration. Vapor 103 would be a perfect choice with a dosage of 0.3% to 2%. In such cases, it's not a must-have additive. The Vapor series includes many additives that can be used in candles, such as Vapor 260, which is said to control the oil content of soil wax, making the surface smooth and increasing the maximum freedom load. However, this is not a must-have additive as well, as these effects can be still achieved through wax materials and the selection of freedom oil. The third commonly used additive is stearic acid, which can be categorized into animal fat extracted and plant extracted stearic acid. In handmade candles, plant stearic acid extracted from palm tree is commonly used. Therefore, it's similar to palm wax and can be used alone to make pillar candles, creating a crystal-like -like texture on the surface. It can also be used as an additive with a dosage of 5% to 10%. It's still not a must-have additive, but its functions are extensive and can be applied to all wax materials mentioned before. When using paraffin wax, it exhibits similar effects to AC6 and Vapor 103. However, as paraffin additives, AC6 and Vapor 103 are much superior to stearic acid. Additionally, it can make the surface of soil wax smooth and reduce wax oil, allowing an increase of freedom oil by about 5%. For example, if soy wax can only carry 8% of freedom oil, adding stearic acid can increase it to about 30%. When added to beeswax, it has little effect as beeswax already possesses good hardness and strong stability. Adding 10% to 20% to feathering palm wax can change the candle's patterns, increasing shrinkage to facilitate demolding. Crystalline palm wax doesn't require this. It can also be added to gel wax to increase hardness, but it's only suitable for solid, opaque designs. Otherwise, it may reduce the transparency of the gel wax. The fourth type is antioxidant, also known as a color stabilizer. Candles exposed to long-term direct sunlight undergo oxidation reactions, 
causing them to fade in color and turn yellow. This additive is specially needed for candles made for outdoor decorations. The dosage varies among suppliers and can be found on the purchase page. As handmade candle making evolves, more additives are available to meet the diverse needs of handmade designs. It's important to note that some rare additives don't belong to handmade wax material or handcrafting level, but rather industrial or plastic feel. So please avoid overusing them. For beginners making handmade candles, only additives for paraffin wax such as acid scents are necessary for now. As you have more requirements, you can explore and purchase other additives. When purchasing wax materials, pay attention to the melting point and the maximum friction low. If the latter is not specific, please consult your wax material supplier so you don't need to test it again and again. I have a video on tools in candle making and the link is already in the description bar, feel free to check it out.